Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today, out of left field, we're going to be painting an Auric Rune Father on a Magma Droth. Because my airbrush broke and I couldn't paint any of the other projects I wanted. And so I happened to have an entire army of Fire Slayers that my brother gave me, but he wanted them all painted a certain way with a brush. So I finally have an opportunity and time to paint them. So here we go. Now this is basically a commission, as such, I'll be painting it his way. So with Corn Red, Wazdaka Red, Troll Slayer Orange, Uriel Yellow, and Dorn Yellow, I will be painting the Magma Draw. We're going to start off by painting everything with Dorn Yellow. Now I want to use a basic brush and to get into everywhere in the nooks and crannies. It's okay if the coverage is bad as long as the paint in the cracks is good. And now with Uriel Yellow, we're going to dry brush the entire thing. We want to cover basically 95% of the entire thing. Only in the thin cracks will it not show. Occasionally, if we wet the brush a little bit or the paint is a little too wet, it'll seep into the cracks, which is kind of okay at this step. It'll just add some more flavor and diversity. And we will also use a different size brush to get into the very fine cracks. We want the Dorn Yellow, the whitish yellow, to be barely, barely visible, only in the recesses, the deepest recesses. And then with Troll Slayer Orange, we're going to go over the entire model again. Painting, I guess you could say, uh, 85 to 90 percent of the whole model. As far as the fins go, we want to make sure that the base is more brighter than the uh, tips of the fins, so we want to put a lot of effort on dry brushing heavily the upper halves of the fins. And now with Wazdaka Red, we put heavy emphasis on the tips of the fins. We want them to be the darkest red. And as far as the rest of the model, we're basically painting them maybe 60 to 70 percent. There are certain areas where we're going to want to put a little more, like I guess you could say the outer parts, like his knee joints, shoulders and stuff. We want to put uh, more focus on there so it's a darker red. Certain places like closer to the joints or what you would call the soft spots. We want them to be lighter in color to uh, kind of show like it moves more so heat is uh, more concentrated there so it's not as bright. Basically the outer edges, places that are far from the body or never really come in contact with other parts of his flesh are going to be darker. And then with corn red, we're going to apply this all over, covering, I don't know, maybe like 50 to 60 percent. It's only, we're doing a very light dry brush of this, except on the horns and the tips of the fins. We want a lot of corn red on the tips of the fins and the tips of his horns. I then realize we need to go even further beyond. So we're going to get some Rhinox hide and we're going to brush this on to all the tips of his horns, uh, the tips, how do I describe it, the shoulder flame things, a bunch of the horns on his head, the horns on his tail, we're going to paint those a lot. And then towards the end, we're also going to paint it the nails, his actual claw nails. And then we're going to into a very light dry brush on his like back scales with uh, Rhinox hide as well as some parts on his like knees and stuff like certain parts of his body we want them to be even darker And he's finally done. It may not look like it, but this took a long time. Those dry brushing steps took a long time. Through the power of editing, it looked short, but no, that was many hours. I then take Uriel Yellow and then put a tiny dot right where his eyes are. 
And then with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, we're going to paint uh, the entire model with this coating in it. And with Vallejo Liquid Copper, I'm going to use this as the base layer for all these like metal runes implanted into his fins, his shoulders, and his body. And then with Vallejo Liquid Gold, Old Gold, we're going to highlight all these metallic pieces throughout his body. Alright, so part of the condition of me painting his army was he had to do all the assembly and he had to do all the bases. And so I'm holding a lava base that he made in the Games Workshop style, so I don't know how to make this. But if you want to know, look up Games Workshop's tutorials, because I have no idea. Alright now, with Balthazar Gold, Agrax Earthshade, and Brass Scorpion, we are going to paint the chair. We're going to start off with a base layer of Balthasar Gold all over. However, I forgot to get footage of that, so here's the step of me la layering on Agrax Earthshade all over. I then, after applying the Agrax Earthshade, dry brush Balthasar Gold all over. And then I go and take the Brass Scorpion and then I do a, hi a highlight dry brush of it. However, I notice that you actually can't really see it. So then I adapt. I take Lead Belcher and then I apply this all over in a dry brush all over. And now I can see it. And it helps define the edges. Now with Corn Red, Wazdaka Red, Troll Slayer Orange, and Uriel Yellow, we'll be painting the Fire Brazier at the very top, starting with Uriel Yellow, around two coats of this all over, and a little bit to spill over on the surrounding metal. And so I'm going to be using overbrushing with Troll Slayer Orange. This is close to dry brushing, but it's still slightly wet. I just carefully slide the edges of it on, and this pretty much picks out all the upper raised areas. I then go to Wazdaka Red and then do the same thing, I overbrush but a lot less because I still want to be able to see the yellow and the orange. And once that's done, I'm going to go to the Corn Red and overbrush again on the very tips and edges. A very light overbrush. We want the flame pillars that are very high up to be mostly red though. And now with the Army Painter Anti-Shine Matte Varnish, we're going to take this and apply this all over the metal, because it allows the metal to actually have a little bit of shine. But I apply a little bit of water because it's a little sticky and gooey, so to make it flow better. And once that is done, we're going to go back to AK Interactive Ultra Matte, and we're going to apply a little bit of it onto the fire. We'll then go to Vallejo Liquid Gold Old Gold again, and then we'll apply it to all the rooms on this chair. Once again, going back to these paints, we're moving on to the uh, Auric Father, 
and we're going to paint the largest part of him, which is his hair. So with a base layer of corn red, we're going to apply it all over his hair, his beard, and his crest. And then once that's done, we're going to take Waz Docker Red, and we're going to overbrush close to a dry brush all over his beard and his crest. And once that's done, we're going to go with Troll Slayer Orange and do the same thing again, but a little bit lighter than the Waz Docker Red. And then once that's done, we're going to go with Uriel Yellow. Um, this time mostly towards the upper half of his crest and towards the edges of his beard. We want to be light with this. This is more of a dry brush. We want to finely pick out things with our dry brush. We don't want it to be everywhere, we just want it to be noticeable. And then with Dorn Yellow, we want to pick out the very tips of his crest with it. Think like French tips or something like that. I forgot to get footage of it, but basically the handle for his latchkey great axe is going to be Rhinox Hide. It's like a wood. With Jokero Orange, Skeleton Horde Contrast, Lamian Medium, and Cadian Flesh Tone, we're going to be painting the flesh of the dwarf. And we're going to start with a base layer all over of Jokero Orange. And then with a one-to-one -one mix of Skeleton Horde and Lamian Medium, we apply this all over the flesh. And then with Jokero Orange, we apply it to 90 to 95% of the entire model, leaving in the deepest, darkest recesses to stay with the skeleton horde. And then with a one-to-one -one mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and Jokero Orange, we apply this to all over the highlighted areas, the raised areas. Then with pure Acadian Flesh Tone, we apply this to all the raised areas and edges. And then back to AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, we then apply this all over the hair and the flesh.
We then use Rhinox hide to apply it to the leather. And then with Lead Belcher, Nuln Oil, Warp Block Bronze, and Balthazar Gold, we're going to do all the metal pieces on the Auric Rune Father, starting with Lead Belcher on the handle pieces and the helmet. We also use it on the weapon and to pick out the little pieces of metal on his back. And then we apply lead belcher all over these metal pieces. And then once that is done, we then dry brush lead belcher all over them again, including the helmet, the blades, and yeah, that's pretty much it. And now with Warp Block Bronze, we use this as the base layer on several metal pieces onto his helmet, as well as these dragon things that apparently go on his shoulders. And then we overbrush slash dry brush with Balthazar Gold all over these dark metal pieces. Okay, this was something I couldn't get on camera because I pretty much had to have this guy like right in my face, so I couldn't really get images of it. But basically I took the whitest white I had, which in my case was white scar, and then I applied it to his little pupils. I then took a micro pen, a, 20, a .25 millimeter micro pen, and then used it to apply the black onto his eyes. Once that was done, I took Cadian Flesh Tone and Lead Belcher, because these are the surrounding colors around his eyes, and just to tighten it up so that his there was no drippage or anything. And then back to Vallejo Liquid Copper, I apply this on most of the metal pieces and ornaments that he has on his weapon and on his beard. I then apply Vallejo Liquid Gold Old Gold onto like, several runes, the runes imprinted on his body, and several parts of his beard attachments. He has these keys dangling from his beard. And then with a combination of super glue and what you might call it model glue, I then attached him to his chair and then the chair to the dragon and then his weapons. This, uh, most of it happened off camera because it was very finicky and stuff and I needed to be very sure I had it up to my face and stuff, so. And there he is. Ah. Final assembly, everything's done, he's primed and ready for battle. Cool story about him, I once showed my brother apparently you could take two uh, magic items with him and basically in one round of combat he was able to kill 16 Blight Kings or deal 52 wounds in one combat phase in Age of Sigmar. Eh, this guy's a scumbag. Okay, so back onto the model. 
So it wasn't mine. I I'm not gonna put this on eBay because it's not mine to sell and like because my airbrush broke and by broke I mean I was fixing it and then one of the metal pieces fell and then it disappeared and I could not find it after hours of search. So I had to order a replacement. And so this is a project that required no brush because my brother wanted it a specific way and so I just copied it without the airbrush. I would have liked to try this with an airbrush. I figured the uh, magma droth would have been much faster to paint. As far as onto the paint job, since I can't really comment on the base, I'm gonna have to like take it out <laughs> of my calculations or like my score. As far as it goes, hmm, looking back, I think there's some runes I missed on the dragon and a few things do feel a little bit lackluster. I mean, the uh, Vallejo liquid gold and old gold wasn't as shiny as I would have hoped. I should have gone with uh, the regular gold and that would have been much brighter and that would have stood out more. I, I feel this is more like a 7 out of 10. A solid 7 out of 10. Alright, so moving on. There will be more fire slayers coming in but that's mostly because I can't really paint my other projects currently. I am working on my custom dice because that requires a lot of practice with resin and a lot of modeling. So I'm slowly working on that. I have to experiment and get that up to stuff. So you're probably going to see another Fire Slayer project and then once my airbrush is back to 100% I can go back to the projects I was planning on. Alright, so like the video if you like the video, subscribe for more, share it if you want to share it, comment if you want to comment on anything, hit the like button if you liked it, the dislike button is right there if you disliked it, whatever. See you guys again soon. Bye.